All right, welcome everyone. Can you guys hear us? You guys in the chat? Can you hear us? So uh, here we are, we're at our second Force Friday. Um, in the future, you know, we're going to dig into uh, interviews, we're going to do demos, more critiques like we did last week. But I thought it would be interesting here at the very beginning of these Force Fridays to uh, see if we can come up with an answer to something that comes up at least all the time in my career is the idea of, um, you know, does talent exist in, in drawing? Do you need talent to, to draw? You know, like, what is it? What is talent? Does talent exist? Is it about skill? Like, how does this all work, right? So. Um, I thought you guys would get a kick out of today's meeting as well, because what I've asked um, Diego, Swenley, and Murtunje to bring in, and myself, is drawings from our childhood. Uh, so you guys can see where each one of us came from, right? And that will be sort of the backdrop artistically to um, this very, I think, interesting uh, uh, conversation, right? All right, so... Um, I guess before we show any of that artwork, I would like to hear from you guys first. You know, do you guys have any thoughts about the idea of talent uh, within drawing, or is it purely skill-driven? Like, where's your guys' heads at? So while you do that, I'm going to get us ready over here in Photoshop to, um, to start taking a look at our artwork. Okay. Let's see here. So one of the things I want to talk about first while we start this conversation going is one of the things that I teach on the website all the time is these three steps to, um, to drawing, which is uh, the idea of, which is the idea of having the eyeball, the brain and the hand is these, uh, um, these moments in time to create a drawing. And what I try to teach on the website is that we're trying to bring these three things together. Now, I bring this up because we start having this conversation about, uh, you know, is drawing talent or is it skill? And, you know, I started thinking, well, you know, what happened to myself? And we're going to find this out again from me and the other force guys here today. You know, is it something at the very beginning, at an early age? Like, does your brain have the capacity to see better than, you know, one of your friends? Uh, is it interest driven? You know, is that what's actually causing it? Um, is it something physical, you know, that's innate, you know, to yourself? Uh, I think I wrote in here, in fact, yeah, I put in here, what is the definition of talent, right? The definition is natural aptitude or skill, right? I think the key word in here is natural. Right. It's like, what does that mean by it being uh, by being natural or not? Um, let's see here. Do do do. Give me one second. Okay. You know, so what does it mean by being natural or not? Right. Um, let me take a look at what you guys are talking about here. Any feedback from here? I personally believe it's a mix of both, but skill overpowers talent. For example, I'm rather tall. And I have a build that is suited for basketball. Can I play? Hell no. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of interesting. You have a physical, Marco is saying he has a, he's got height, right? But that doesn't mean he has the skill. I guess my question, Marco, is, you know, could you learn this, the skills to play basketball, right? I have a brother-in-law who's shorter, and, but he can play basketball really well. Is he going to end up, you know, playing in the NBA? No, probably not, right? But does he have that because of how much basketball he's played, right? He's played a lot of basketball in his life. He's even refed basketball, so he knows the game really well, right? Like, what does that look like? I think it's hard work to draw, right? It's hard. So I'm talking to Kaha Zhao. But if you have a master to show the mistakes in the path, yeah. So I would agree there, too. I think that um, mentorship and having good instructors helps you uh, obtain your skills more quickly, more efficiently, right? Because you have somebody to, to guide you. I think some people may be naturally more inclined to understanding the principles, but without actually honing that talent. So that's kind of interesting. Is it honing, so honing the talent versus the skill is really nothing. 
I can learn, but I'm personally not interested, hence why I'm such a poop at it, <laughs> all right? All right, so let's, let's start the fun, all right? Um, I wanna share with you guys some of the work that we did as, um, as kids. Oh, and before we do that, one last thing I wanna share. Um, I grabbed this image here. This is um, Picasso, okay? And this is Picasso, I think, around 14 years old, I think it was, 14 or 15. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, as you may or may not know, Diego and I were in Barcelona last summer um, teaching, and I had the opportunity to go to the Picasso Museum. And uh, it was pretty amazing to see his skill level uh, at a very young age. Uh, there was a piece there, I think he was 19, and it was an oil painting that must have been about, I don't know, 12 feet wide by eight feet tall. It was huge and, and it was beautifully painted. Uh, and I just thought, damn, I, I was not able to do that at 19, that's for sure, right? Yet, when you learn about Picasso, you find out that his dad was a painter, right? So Picasso was learning to see um, well very early on and therefore was already starting to learn skills um, early on as well, right? Yeah, 14, right? So I, I, I was not doing this at 14, which you will see. <laughs> Embarrassingly so, but you will, you will see very quickly I was not doing this. Um, although I have to say, and you'll see this in our work today, um, I can say for myself, I wasn't trying to draw reality too much either at this age. I was actually just trying to draw like comic book characters and fantasy stuff. Like my head wasn't trained on, uh, let me look at reality to learn. I was thinking I was drawing from imagination. In fact, so much so that I'm guilty of um, the headset or mindset of, I used to think trying to draw from reality was copying, which to some degree it is. Uh, and I had, I had no interest in that. I thought it was cheating. You know, so that's kind of another part of the conversation today. Oh, Noria, that's cool. You've been to it. Yeah, the museum, if you, anyone's ever in Barcelona, go to the Picasso Museum. It is amazing. It's like it's just so uh, inspiring and informative. So I thought we would start today with, um, uh, I want to start today with Mertunje, because uh, Mertunje <laughs> did the best job by all of us of having a ton of work from uh, early childhood on. Right. Yeah, so funny. He's like half my age. So. <laughs> exactly. For him, it's easier. Right? Exactly. You have to dig deeper. That's true. This is like five years ago from Matunje. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is not that long ago. Right. So you'll see how quickly he learned. Right. So here's Matunje at three years old. Right. Only in 2002. The first anatomy study ever. <laughs> yes. First anatomy study ever. Right. We've got a skull going on here. Yeah, you know, 2002. I was 32 years old when you were drawing this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was 16. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of cool, too. It's just the, the wide range of ages we have here and cultures. I really love that about us as a team. Um, mm -hmm. But again, like, look at this. Look at, um, like, what's going on mm -hmm. as we start analyzing this? Do you know, do you, I know this is a crazy question to ask you, Mertunje, but do you remember what mm -hmm. this was drawn from? Were you looking at a real cat? Were you copying an illustration? Do you know? No, uh, that time I was, uh, you know, newspapers were a big deal for me. So mm -hmm. I was just like copying and from magazines. So yeah, this one is from a book. Mm -hmm. I remember this cat, wow. but this skull, I don't remember actually. <laughs> Where did I get skull. that thing? Mm -hmm. So yeah, like most of the time I was using reference, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's fun, you know, mm -hmm. copying things. So I'm like kind of that sheep who's going for the reality. Know, trying to capture reality more rather than you know comic book stuff and all that mm -hmm. so yeah the... yeah we're gonna see very quickly here you're gonna see how that served Mertunje. Uh let's see yeah. here so here you are at three years old going into four right so tell us a little bit about what's happening here um yeah so one of the bigger inspirations was you know again what i said like i want to go to reality so this is my, uh, like, probably first live drawings ever. Mm -hmm. So the first one you can see, guys, here is my room in which I'm actually living today as well. Mm -hmm. So this is my room, you know, a little perspective study, I guess. Mm -hmm. So at the right, you can, in the first picture in the right, you can see the gate and the little electricity board, if you can zoom in there. This so, right here? Yeah. Yep. And uh, in between, there's TV. And in the left, you can see the wall and show pieces. So... Yeah, this is like a live, uh, live drawing. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of interested in uh, keeping the shapes, mm -hmm. uh, composition of the shapes, and all those things. 
<laughs> this really old drawing. It's almost years. like your first on location or reportage drawing, really, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. only, th you're three years old. And if I think about me at three, uh, I don't know what I was, I was probably sucking on my thumb at three, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, that's pretty amazing that, you know, you yeah. had this sense of trying to like draw your room. I, I probably wasn't even aware I was in my room, you know? So, and then here, <laughs> I was like watching cartoons all the time. Um, were you watching having... were you watching cartoons a lot do you remember watching tv yeah yeah you can see like i draw a cartoon mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so i used to draw a lot of animes and stuff and i see yeah more of a disney stuff than animes mm -hmm. so yeah the movies like beauty and beast and i remember like on cartoon network it's gonna like premiere every week <laughs> i guess mm -hmm. so yeah i was watching cartoons that time. And here is Sketchman drawings. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's... Uh, you can see in the right, uh, there's like a Disney deconstruct what we're exercising today. <laughs> <laughs> <And they're>... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. There's early Disney de You know, it's funny you say that because to tell you the truth, that's what's missing here, right? Like at four, you don't know that you need to build yeah. the construction and the perspective and the planes and the forms to really understand where this is. You're, you know, you're, you're copying is what you're really doing, right? You're seeing something and trying to copy it. And you can see the, you know, you can see how confident your line is to pull off strokes like this with like a marker or a pen. You're not very hairy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so very confident line, you know, and you're still lining stuff up pretty damn well, again, for only four or five years old, you know? Very interesting. They're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Not for a five-year-old. I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty amazing. Are you sure your parents didn't help you there? Because <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm starting to doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Oh, they were like very happy with that. You know what I'm doing? Still. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a good point too. You know, so what was childhood like in the in your household, right? Did did you did you have supportive parents from the beginning on? Were they like, wow, these are really good? Did they have an awareness of they thought that you were doing well with drawing? Yes, they have an awareness, and they also made me join some drawing classes as well. Ah. So yeah, the teacher there was you know teaching us some of the colors and all those stuff. I I quite actually learned there too. So, yeah, they're aware and they're supportive from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great help from them mm -hmm. from the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a special guest star in the chat here, my wife. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Ellen. Uh, so she wrote here, but there is talent here. Most four-year-olds will uh, still draw something from straight on, even if it isn't. You're drawing three-quarter views, which she calls out, like the stuff in the faces, right? And that's true. I think more, yeah. most three or four-year-olds even would not be drawing from reference. I think most three or four-year-olds are just kind of like, here's my family. Everyone's flat and pancaked on a piece of paper. Here's the house, right? And mm -hmm. like that's pretty much it, you know. And you're, it, I think what really helped you grow um, early on was this desire to draw the things around you, not what was in your head or maybe a mixture of both, you know. Yeah. There's a psychology. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No. Uh, so yeah, environment I think plays a big role. You know, if you're answering this question that it, that talent exists, and since you can see, like most of great artists, they have a you know common type of environment, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if you see like Picasso, we are talking about, he has an environment. His father was a painter. Right. And he like probably encouraged him. I have. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, same with me. Like my parents did encourage me, and that was that's how I'm able to like grow faster. Yeah. What What I was about to say is that there's a psychology thing that uh, explains that kids draw people uh, straight on, like you're looking straight on, and animals from the profile. That's uh, a relationship they have with with humans and with animals. Yeah, I think that's that sounds right. I think it is like animals are usually profile and people we're dealing with each other's faces, so we just draw it straight on. <laughs> That's funny, Mrs. Force. Yes, that is true. Mrs. Force is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I mean, look at five. Like this, I would imagine is from a reference again, right? It better be from a reference, yeah, or I yeah. throw my pencil yeah. in the garbage now. That's my thirty-two <laughs> years old. <one. laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's from reference. Yeah. So, again, I, I, you know, we we talk a lot on the website about uh, having the ability to allow your brain to see the truth. You could have really flattened this out, destroyed the proportions, ignored the perspective. But your brain at a very early age was just accepting. You know, you were very, very accepting of what you were looking at. And I think that's that's a big deal, you know. So there's like the that's where the question starts coming in for mm -hmm. me of is there such is there such thing as talent? Not necessarily let's say in drawing, but it seems like you had some kind of innate ability early on to see clearly. Your brain was able to accept what you saw. And with great focus too, right? With really great focus. So I think that's really interesting that you know that you did that. Was some uh, like yeah. uh, like answer uh, to this question would be from me is like there it's a mix of both. You know, one of the person in the chat says that, so you know I'm with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like talent exists, but it's without hard working and without smart working as well. You know, it's waste. So yeah. if you have a keen yeah. interest, but you're not uh, Practicing it, I think it's waste. That's what you know makes you successful. Yeah, so it's interesting to say that that's waste, right? It's like you might be good at something, and mm -hmm. you know maybe maybe I think what's even a little more disconcerting for me is maybe you're good at something and you barely even really know you're good at it. Maybe you've had only a small taste of it, not enough to gain an awareness. Maybe the people around you aren't aware, yeah. you know, and they're not aware, so you don't have the support system for it. You know, you might be like a great singer, but no one in your house really knows that you're a great singer and you kind of let it fade away in your life and it's over and you never have the opportunity to experience it or share it with the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this was interesting. But, uh, yeah, go ahead. But there are like, uh, yeah, like some of the exceptions as well. So if you like, if you see Michelangelo, so his father don't want him to become like a painter, like artist. Right. So... I think like yeah, he should beat him or something, but um, still he like he's one of the like great great legends yet. So he didn't get the environment, but he actually yes, I'm like you're right about it. That's an interesting. That's yeah, a, he accepts the truth that I want to do that. Yeah, there's another interesting conversation in there. Um, there's a psychology book called The Drama of the Gifted Child, and it, mm -hmm. it presents the idea of, am I great at the thing that I'm great at because I received love for it from my parents when I was younger? So let's okay. say that, you know, all of us might be guilty of this sitting here today in this meeting, which is maybe we're all drawing well because our parents did recognize it and say, wow, you're really awesome at drawing. Wow, you're really good at this art thing, right? And we just, and they kept feeding us, right? And then you're getting attention for it, right? So you keep working on it because it feels good to get that attention and that admiration and love from your parents, right? When maybe you're really not supposed to be drawing, you're supposed to be a, a piano player, right? And you'd be awesome at that, but the world will never know. You'll never know, right? It's kind of interesting, yeah. interesting, you know, it's like how and why did we get to the places we are? And at this point, we may not even be able to answer it, but it's something, I think it's kind of an interesting dilemma, you know, to, to think about. Um, yeah, love the thought. <laughs> yeah. And not that it's a bad one, you know, it's like, hey, maybe it is, you know, my admiration for my parents or my love of my parents that drove me down this path, you know. Uh, um, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Let's see what else we have here. So now we make this big jump, right? So we went to from about 10 years old to 19. There's a nine-year span here. And um, I think, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, and you guys jump in, but again, I think your, your skill at seeing was really helping you here. And you can see now you're starting to bring in drawing tools as well, right? Like you're drawing forms and you're going three-dimensionally. You can see the three-quarter view on this tooth, right? You're building the head yep. to understand the head. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, this is a life study, but <laughs> so again, um, I'm still like interested in like copying from life or learning from life. I, I would rather say. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So one uh, one the time I was uh, you know roaming around doing some planner painting and I just found this dog skull. Mm -hmm. So I just like bring it 
with home with me and try to study compare it to human skull mm -hmm. i know yeah. there's some instruct yeah. you know there's some instructors Same out way. sorry i was going to say there's some instructors out there where their their method of teaching is purely to teach somebody to see right like just see more clearly see more clearly yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a lot to that, yeah, I have yeah. to say. I, I think it's really, 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 really important to see. In fact, so much so, I think that we need more content on drawingforce.com that even pushes into classes that are before even force just to see in general, right? Like some people just yeah. don't see it all, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what you've successfully been like tagging along with you this through your whole experience is your, your level of honest sight, you know? And then now you're getting an understanding of it, right? This is very different than, let's say, the Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid Snow White drawings, right? Okay, let's see. So here you're the same age, 19. You're doing a tonal study, right? Yeah, this is uh, one of the, uh, in the oil painting workshops. Mm -hmm. So the mentor there actually asked us to do a tonal sketch of the painting we are copying. Mm -hmm. So this painting is from, I don't know, remember the artist's name. The painting title is Liberty Leading the People. Yeah. So, yeah, I love the uh, anatomical uh, landmarks, which you can see like the knees and mm -hmm. the sternocolitum asteroid and the right mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. his foot. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of impressed by that. So, yeah, again, a copy mm -hmm. before force. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pre-force. Right, let's see. So one thing, just to call it out, of all the drawings we've seen that you submitted, I think only maybe one or two at the most uh, were mm -hmm. from imagination. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly right. you were just yeah. trying to learn and copy and see from reality the whole time, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, see, I, I, I did very little of this, I have to say, until like college. You know, I was barely looking at reality. I, I was, my mom enrolled me in some art classes too, I think when I was probably like 12 or 13 years old. And, you know, we did some drawing outside and that was the beginning of me actually trying to draw things I saw, you know, but very mm -hmm. little of it. I was usually in my head, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, I was two times lucky, you know, in my life. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The first, uh, the second time is when I joined force. Mm -hmm. And the first time is, you know, when my mentor says that, okay, you need to draw well. Yeah. <laughs> you need to study anatomy. So it was in the school time, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, the drawing teacher says, oh, you need to learn anatomy if you want to become successful in art. So anatomy is really important. Uh, uh, he always says that human is the greatest machine ever created by yeah. nature. So yeah. if you can draw that, you can draw anything. Yeah, I agree I was with that. Really one. impressed by the thought and study. Yeah, yeah. So I just like studied from school time. Yeah, that's great. I love the way he said that. I would agree with that a hundred percent. Oh, this is out of order. So here you <laughs> this are. Is you're, some college stuff. Yeah, this is pre pre nineteen. <laughs> so you're sixteen here, but this is interesting. You look look at all the construction and form you put into this. Right, so at 16 years yeah. old, you were trying to like build this stuff. This is more like the Disney deconstructs, right? It's like here you're actually trying to yeah, yeah. build them out. So uh, what the, what we used to do is, uh, you know, we play the movie and uh, take some screenshots, and then we used to de deconstruct them through mannequins and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. that, this time. Mm -hmm. So here you and are, you're 17. Is, you know, when I joined, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so look at that. You joined when you were 17, right? Which is kind of amazing. Yeah. So you had already, now that we've all seen what you did prior, it's like you had a sense of seeing clearly. And it seems like for you, force was just another level of seeing clearly, right? It's like, oh, there's another thing I've never been taught to see, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And, and this that, is not even when I joined Drawing Force. It's just like when I when my mentor introduced Ray Book. So. Oh, wow, amazing! <laughs> it does. It does. You know, go, following your path, it really does present the notion, though, that um, it's hard to just try to say you're going to learn to draw something like Force if you can't see in the first place, right? Going back to the equation, 
right? And your your skill, yeah, your skill or talent, whichever it may be, at being able to see well, um, this just gave you another thing to look at, right? And to try and understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So this was at nineteen. Now you're throwing force all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's like drawing better than all three of us combined, and he's like nineteen years old. All right. Yeah, it's awesome. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah kick him, kick him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kick him while he's down. That's why he's in India. We can't get to him you know, while he's like drawing all this amazing stuff. Yeah, this is amazing. Like I said, for nineteen, uh, amazing. I did not draw like this at nineteen. That's for sure. But then again, force wasn't a real thing at that point either. All right, and I'll share yeah, that with. You. Yeah. The second time I was lucky, so when I joined drawing force. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with the thought that you know the mentors you're getting, the type of mentors you're getting, really uh, set your way to success. So yeah. I'm like uh, really lucky to find you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, this is what makes me teach, right? It's like, wow, look at that. That is amazing. This is even pre us talking at all, right? This is mainly like the book or so, or maybe you just started having conversations with us. Yeah, this is when I joined. Mm -hmm. So in mm -hmm. December of 2018. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So this is when I joined. Yep. Yeah, it's fantastic. Let's see, what do I want here? I want to come back out. Let's take a look at what you have left. And then we'll move on to the next force instructor. So this is more recent, all right? How yeah. how old are you now? Twenty. Twenty. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. right now I'm twenty one. Twenty one, yeah. right? Just I'm turning twenty two on Ju in June. In seven. June. Yeah. yeah, we got to get you as amazing as possible as fast as possible. <laughs> Just to say, like, look at this twenty year old. Look at this twenty one year old. Look at this twenty two year old. Right. So I think this drawing comes now from um, you and I talking about drawing with blind force, right? Uh, no, not yet. This is from imagination, but it's oh not my blind. God. One. It's a bl it's blind, but from imagination. No, it's not blind, but it's from imagination. I see. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing to think that this is imaginative, right? This looks very, very real. You know, all mm -hmm. the things that you're pulling out of it, the specificity of the foot and the ankle, the body and the rotation. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Very good. I love. <laughs> uh the imagination drawings yeah yeah you're very good at them which is kind of interesting because um i think when you draw from the figure a lot and that's how you're trained there's a jump you have to make from drawing from seeing which you're good at right very good at and as we've seen in your whole childhood um to yeah. saying okay i'm going to draw out of my mind and you made that jump do you have any thoughts as to why you were able to make that jump so successfully uh. <laughs> Uh, again, you know, I would say uh, force is not a technique, it's a kind of a self-expression. Mm -hmm. And I think like any technique in the world would be that if it's successful. So art is not uh, meant to be teach you some kind of technique. Mm -hmm. I think art is more like teaching yourself expression through some means. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason uh, why I actually forced, um, like I have a keen interest in force because I was kind of a purist from inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why I'm so connected to it. Mm -hmm. Like I use a lot of, you know, throwing, throwing strokes and like that kind of things. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's like so easy for me because I just have to learn the techniques to uh, like show it on, show it to the audience, like mm -hmm. draw it on the paper. Mm -hmm. But otherwise I have that kind of thinking inside me. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, that's, that really helps me to jump. Yeah. I think when I, when we started like talking through Zoom um, a little ways back, uh, one of the things that really struck me that you said was, you know, like this, when I, when you found force, it was like, oh, this is already like part of me. This was the thing I just needed to like have somebody show me. Like you got it immediately, you know? Yeah. It was very sort of nat. And I, I, again, to play with this idea of talent and skill, it was almost like something in you was really understood this. It was like this other piece you were looking for, you know? Yeah, I'm really drawn to it when I first see you drawing mm -hmm. on yeah. Strathmore Center videos. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, the Strathmore videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Mertunjay. 
let's keep mo let's like kind of go through all of us and we'll keep sort of poking at this skill um talent scenario i mean what did we learn from yeah. tunje i mean it seems like at an early age you were seeing really well mm -hmm. And you kept working on that. You didn't draw from imagination very much. It was mostly like observing the world around you and staying there, you know, which I think yeah. is very unique in somebody's um, ability to learn as a child to become an artist. Um, but you kept working and drawing, right? So you were building up skill, eye skill, hand skill, right? And then structure and all the other sort of like draftsman skills um, to mm -hmm. get to that place. So interesting. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go next, Diego or Swenley? <laughs> It's okay if you want to go with All right. me. Let's You're go. going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is more like it, Diego. Thank you. Mine look like this too. <laughs> like <laughs> this is an awesome Superman, right? He's crayoned in. I love the almost abstraction. I think somebody in the chat I was reading mentioned shape. It was Carla was saying like, hey, seeing shapes. Shapes are interesting because I think kids see shape early on. You know, you can see this is very shape driven. It's like a shape for Superman, shape for the cape right? The legs. It's really cool. And I love that you went in there and you tried to get the face in there. And it looks like you even attempted it with the crayons, right? So how old were you here again? Yeah. The, the name and the name of the file is the, how we were, I, I think it's five or something. Yeah. I think you were five. I think yeah. Right. Five there. Yeah. Five years old. Do you remember doing this? No, no, no. No. <laughs> See, Mertunje, uh, he remembers himself. At, yeah. He remembers himself at three. At five, you're like, I have no idea, uh, you know, and I, I basically, I don't remember what I did last year, right? So, you go on to yeah. the, you who are to you? Forget it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's a miracle I know my name, you know, and yet he's like going back to three. So here's two other drawings. Let's see, what were the ages on these? So we have 11 and 12, right? So you're 11 years old here and 12 here. See this? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. One on the, on the left of the screen, uh, it's... Uh, it's a drawing. I, I kind of copy the, the body mm -hmm. and make it a, a monkey uh, instead of... Uh, when you say you copied the body, was the pose from something real or was it like another cartoon? Yeah, the pose for, from something real. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay, that's uh, cool. And so I remember that it. because that one, uh, when we finished school, that was kind of our logo. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I won the contest of creating that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that was cool. Yeah. And the other one was I, I was starting to to look into caricature. So I started to look at, at the books on how to create uh, a head. Mm -hmm. Which you can clearly see I was not understanding. <laughs> so that that was my very beginning of. Uh, trying to make it serious about learning how to draw and caricature and the other the other drawing is just me enjoying drawing right you know? yeah it's an interesting thing you just brought up which is you know at what age did each of us like take it seriously i mean what does seriously mean does it mean like okay i want to get better at this i guess is what i'm saying by serious right like uh, this is something i like to do and i really want to get better it's not just like a goof off thing i'm doing on the side i want to improve in it right so what, what age, well, let's, since we did Mertunje, Mertunje, what age do you think it was more like, I want to keep getting better at this thing? Mm, when I was one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one. 17, 17. When one. Yeah. 17. What about you, 17, Diego? 15, yep. Yeah, Diego, when was that for you? Around uh, 12, 13, 14. Uh, just uh, to know, to be aware that, that I like that. You yeah. know, yeah. Not, not saying I want to work this professionally or whatever. Right. But yes, uh, thinking about, oh, I like to do this and I like to do this better. Right. And you, Swenley? Uh, for me, I think it was around 12, 13 years old. Uh, I remember was, I was particularly playing a video game and I saw the concept out at the end. Ah. And that was like the big epiphany for me for like, oh, there's people doing this at the professional level, so I can learn it too. Right. Yeah, I think for me, I I remember my first art book was how to draw comics the Marvel way. And I think the fact that I had that book to me is a signifier of I must have wanted to start really learning. And I would say it's the same as you guys. It was probably like uh, early to mid-teens, you know, somewhere in there. It was probably when my head started thinking about it. Yeah. 
All right, let's see what we have for Diego. So now we make a big jump. We go from 12 to 28, right? So if we keep the 12 up there and we keep the 28 up here, right, you can see totally different headspace, right? The line control, yeah. the structuring. We can tell who, you know, the, the, who the caricature is of, right, versus this. Um, yeah, what, what happened to you? This is a big jump. So what happened to you in between these two worlds, Diego? Uh, well, I started to draw caricature. I created, uh, this is a, a, a nice thing. Uh, I remember, uh, when, you know, I'm, I'm 41 years old. Mm -hmm. So when internet, uh, came up and, and I finally was able to join the internet, uh, it was around 96, 97, mm -hmm. uh, until 2000 or something like that, internet was not what it but it is now. Mm -hmm. So I joined uh, a forum that it was called drawingboard.net. Oh yeah, I remember that, yep. And I started uh, a, a topic there, a thread actually, called Caricaturist Caricature, mm -hmm. where we joined with another caricaturist from around the world and we draw each other. Uh, and it was a swap of caricatures. I drew, I drew you, you drew me, mm -hmm. and well, that, there I made a lot of, uh, of caricaturists like uh, Vicenzo Pazzo, uh, Chris Wall, uh, me, me, uh, Jason Seiler, uh, Joe Bloom, and all those. I have caricatures from, from all of them. And that, that was where my really caricature love started. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that drawing was created after uh, a website I created after that uh, thread that is called Deluxe Challenge, mm -hmm. that every, every week I uploaded a, a celebrity and you have to draw that celebrity. So I have uh, a collection of caricatures from many, many artists drawing uh, different the different celebrities. Yeah, so cool. I, I was real at that time now. I was starting to think, okay, this is for me. I want to do that. Uh, uh, and then I go. That, that, that's the time when I started to draw uh, caricatures uh, at different places, at uh, theme parks and beaches and street. Right. So you're, you're at 32 years old here, and you're basically becoming a professional caricaturist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, when I look at this, I see the, you know, you've got your good line already, right? So it came from the years of drawing caricatures, right? Uh, and seeing shapes, right? And a sense of force, maybe without calling it force at this point, but there's a lot of like movement and ideas in the images, right? Yeah, what, what I, on the left side of the, of the screen, uh, th this is good because there's another uh, drawing uh, more recent. Uh, that's my girlfriend, Karen wife, mm -hmm. uh, the one on the, uh, the, the one on the left, mm -hmm. the one oh, yeah. before this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is her as well, right? That, that, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's when I started to, to use, uh, like digital tools. Uh, so you can see the difference between, uh, this is from two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the one on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see the difference of, of expression and, and what do I want to say with this drawing and mm -hmm. how designy it is, how it is stylized. Uh, I, I really like, uh, you know, the, the stylization of the drawing, like uh, making it more uh, caricature, but not in the caricature uh, sense of exaggerating uh, the nose or, or the mouth or something. But uh, making it look uh, more appealing, you know? Yeah, more because, abstract, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah more, more abstract. Yeah, more abstract, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that kind of, uh, of thing. That, that's what I, I always love uh, of uh, Disney animator drawings. And I, I have a story I always tell when I, when I give a workshop or, or, or a lecture or whatever. That is, when I was young, I, I started copying like uh, animators' drawings, like uh, Disney animator drawings. And I always found that something was missing. Uh, even, even if I try to copy uh, just step by step, uh, line by line, uh, shadow by shadow, uh, something was missing. And that was the line. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that line, I found a video uh, somewhere on the web. And it was this guy who could draw that in that way. 
and his name, if I don't remember uh, wrong, it was something like Michael Matezzi or something like that. <laughs> right. and, <laughs> and I found out that he's, uh, he has a website called drawingforce.com. So I jumped straight to that website and subscribed, and I found there the thing I was missing, right. that it was understanding what the hell I, I, I was trying to say, you know? Uh, and, and this is really, uh, really important for the thing I we were talking about, about talent and, and, and how we begin, how we start our career in drawing, uh, that we start copying, 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 and you're just copying shapes or angles or, or images or anatomy or whatever, but you're not thinking about what you're trying to say. So Mike came up with this phrase or this quote, uh, your drawings are only as good as your ideas. And that is invaluable. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you understand that quote, that your drawings are only as good as your ideas, then your drawings are going to change immediately. There, there's yeah. no way they stay the same, but yeah. you need to understand what that means. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to oh, yeah. I'm trying to think of how that ties back to today's talk mm -hmm. of talent and skill, right? Like what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, but, but the thing is to me the talent is not about what you can do well, it's what you like to do. Because yeah. if you if you if you like to draw, it doesn't matter if if you are super talented when you're young. You will draw every day of every single moment of your life and you you will you'll get better. Yeah. You'll get better. Yeah, I think you I I'm I'm happy you said that. That's something we haven't talked about yet. I think there's something to finding out what you like to do and like you said pure practice as a human being means you should improve, right? Like there should be some some sense of, you know, you should be able to improve. And I think that that interest drives desire and that drives time and practice, right? Like Norman, not Norman, um, Malcolm Gladwell came out with a book. Um, he's come out with many books, but one of the books I know he talked about 10,000 hours to mastery. And that, that kind of goes right into what Diego's saying here. Yeah, you, your you know, wife is getting jealous. Yes, Don't worry, I, I I'm, see. <laughs> I'm married already. <laughs> yeah, watch out, guys. She's a very jealous person. <laughs> But she, you know, to, to that point, you're, I, I think you're right. I think, I think they feed off of one another, right? It's like if you start working on the thing that you like to do, you see that you're getting better at it, and there that makes you want to do it even more, and then you get better at it, and you want to do it even more, and you get better at it, right? And maybe the parent component is part of that, as I was saying before. You're, you're starting to get accolades or appreciation for that, and you like that too, and you like doing it, and all this stuff kind of keeps snowballing itself and snowballing itself, you know? And I don't know, maybe it seems like, you know, from childhood, maybe you have some innate physical slash mental ability to go, I, hey, I, I can see well. Because, again, looking at Mertunje's work, at an early age, he had this ability to see. I think you and myself, which you guys will see also, like, I think I was very n a sort of normal kid. I, I wasn't looking at things clearly. I was just coming up with stuff out of my head. Um, and, you know, sometimes people, you know, we learn at different times in our lives. I have somebody I'm mentoring right now that only started a year and a half ago, and he's amazing. He's never drawn before, right? But that means, like, he has this ability to see and to understand, you know, what's what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. This is beautiful, right? Great line, the whole body's, you know, holding together, right? It's really nice. A couple One of, of the thoughts uh, in my college, uh, you know, my mentor always says that talent can be made. Talent <laughs> you what? Just need to, you know, talent can be made. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. You just need to like work your ass off. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of interesting, right? That's another way of looking at it. Um, you know, is the talent? Um, you know, I, I I used to actually hate it. I'm trying to remember when this was. Maybe my early twenties or so. If I met somebody through a friend or whatever and they and they would see me drawing, they'd be like, man, you're so talented. And I was like, huh, you don't know how hard I've been working at this. <laughs> like, exactly. this, has, this has nothing to do with talent. It's almost an insult. It was an insult to me to be called talented because I felt like it ignored all the effort. It's like, you you know, I didn't I didn't pop into this world knowing how to draw this well. Like I've been I've been working really hard at this, you know. And yeah, that is really insulting when someone says you got natural talent or God gift. Yeah. God gives so called word. 
yeah, it feels like all that has, you know, been ignored. So, so in closing, Diego, um, with the conversation being on talent and or skill, and is there talent in drawing? I mean, how do you perceive yourself? Was it what you were describing before? You think, hey, I just I love doing this. It's an interest. Do we do we take out the word talent and put in the word interest and say, hey, as a child, I was always interested, and that's why I got to where I am. Yeah, I, I don't know if you if you know this, but uh, in the Russian language, there's no way you can say I am. There, mm. There's no 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 words to oh, say I am. Uh, I, I am an architect, for example, mm -hmm. because that that creates like uh, it, it makes you just one thing. It's like you say, I, I'm an artist. No, you're not an artist. You're right. an artist. Right. You're a husband. You're a father. You're a lot of things. Right. So by saying uh, that talent exists or it doesn't, uh, I don't think that that's, uh, to me, I, I'm talking in my humble opinion. So uh, too, I don't think that's too specific, that it, right? Yeah, that, 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 that thing is, it's, it could be talent, but you also need an, a lot more things to be able to to get to a point, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you could be talent, but if you don't draw ever again in your life, uh, as much talent as you have, it won't work. Right. The same to the other way. If you like to draw uh, and, and 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 you cannot grab a pencil because uh, you don't you don't like to draw or or, or you can't or whatever, uh, and and you're not talented and. You will never get there. But what I mean is you need a lot of things uh, to complete one machine. Right. It's like uh, right. if you have a car and you have a steering wheel, but you don't have uh, wheels, then it won't work. Right. Same thing for any career. If you like to draw, but you don't draw, then you will never be able to draw well. Yeah, I mean, some uh, of those other components can be like, you know, are you inspired? Do you have the drive or the tenacity? You know, are you focused or not focused, right? Like, yeah, and this is something that uh, I, I think uh, the people that is here uh, could relate to. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear a lot, how do you handle artist block? Ah, and, right. and to me, I'm sorry, but, but what the hell is artist block? Right, right. <laughs> you just sit down and draw. Come on, right. there, there's no such thing as artist draw. I don't know what to draw. Sit down and draw a bottle, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, start drawing lines. Yeah. Doodle. I was listening to this talk um, one day um, about a guy who's a writer, and uh, he was saying, "Yeah, you know, a I don't like doing it every day. I get up and I sit down, and sometimes I really hate it. Um, but I sit down, and she's like, well, how do you get over the block?' He's like." The way an artist would get over a block, a visual artist, you know, you would just sit down and start drawing. Start drawing yourself being angry that you have to draw, but at least you're drawing, right? And same with him. He was like, I just write whatever. I hate writing, right? And start writing, right? Like you're at least in the space. You're doing the action, the job of doing whatever your, your interest is, your skill is, and therefore now you're in it. And then all of a sudden that gets you out, you know? The sheer act of doing gets you out of any kind of trap, you know. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Diego, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Let's take a look <laughs> at Mr. Swenley. Uh, Carla says in the chat box that that's a really good thing. Execution can be taught. Uh, yeah. We really love the thought. Yeah. So portfolios for our colleges are most often assessed on ideas and vision. Yeah, it depends on the school, I would say. That's true. I, I find that the schools out there, in fact, I just helped two students get into different art schools. One was Art Center and the other one was Capilano up in in Canada. And uh, they, um, they wanted slightly different things. But I have to say what I'm seeing from art schools now is it's almost like they want you to have all the base skill. And they want to see who you are, that you have some sense of vision and creativity. It's, it's become quite demanding. It's very different, as I'll show you when we get to me, as to what it takes to get into art school. Because I probably shouldn't have been accepted in the first place, but somehow squeaked on by. <laughs> you know? but, so you'll see. But I, I have to say, help, because I, I have quite a few teenage students that I help get into art schools. 
and I'm shocked at um, how how much they're asking for. I mean, at Capilano, they were basically asking for what it would the same. They were asking for the same things that Disney was asking for when I was trying to get into animation. Maybe not that you had to get to the same skill level in that portfolio, but they were asking for the same things. Right. And I was like, whoa, OK, they know animation. They know what they're looking for. And I had to help this one student get to at least a place where they thought he drew well enough to get in. And I'm like, what are you paying these guys for? <laughs> right. <laughs> like you're going there. And I thought the idea was to have them really help you learn how to draw as well. And now that's become way more demanding, you know. So. Well. Um, all right. So here we are, Swenley. Right. So we missed out on Swenley's childhood. Right. Early childhood. Is there anything you could feed us there? Yeah, especially at the hearing and at seeing uh, Mitunje's process. Uh, I realized for me, it, it was not so much about drawing reality. Like, even before I could uh, pick, up a, pick up a pencil, I had like, uh, uh, I used to have all these ideas for characters, you know, in my head. And, um, well, drawing for me was more about getting those ideas out you know i wasn't i wasn't interested as, as a child in drawing what i saw it was more about expressing my ideas mm -hmm. and um well I, I used to like um play with a lot of toys also you know and i realized it was al always characters you know it wasn't so much like cars and and that kind of stuff it was always character driven and um, when I came to the Netherlands to study at 18 years old, um, I didn't have any formal education in art before that because where I come from in Curaçao, especially at that time, there wasn't like an art industry or art schools or anything. Mm -hmm. So once I came here to the Netherlands to study industrial design, that's when I um, got my first formal education in art. And then I realized, hey, um, there are actually like principles, you know, art principles, mm -hmm. drawing principles that I can uh, study, that I can learn in order to help me express my ideas more clearly, you know, right, more right. at a professional level. So for me, drawing has always been, even at this point, um, a means to help me express my character ideas. Mm. If, we, if we're talking about talent, for me, I would say, yes, I always had like the, this innate talent to imagine characters, mm -hmm. you know, as from as young as I can imagine. And no, nobody taught me that. It just came naturally. Right. You know? Like I said, even before I learned how to draw and I think in seeking a way to expressing that, you know, writing wasn't good enough. Right. It needed to be visual. So I found myself drawing like crazy all the time to put these characters on paper mm -hmm. yeah so there was an interest in doing that right yeah i'm kind of playing between the words of talent and interest here right and what diego brought up it's like you had this interest in creating characters right yeah yeah exactly and that drove you that interest was your desire to uh to draw them right and by doing that over and over and over again you naturally and I say naturally, meaning, you know, pr practice obviously is going to improve anyone, um, yeah. you know, so you got better and better at it. Right. And then you started recognizing, oh, wait, there's actual tools or skills to to doing this thing called drawing. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. This is a lot of this. So a lot of this was around 18. So were you in high school already? Like, where, where are you at when you're doing these? Uh, these were just when I came to the Netherlands and started to study industrial design. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, I was focusing more on form and, and uh, clean lines. Uh, that's, that's the stuff I was taught, you know. That was my first uh, formal education in drawing. Mm -hmm. Marco wrote here, I just wanted to call something out. Um, I believe that doing the right kind of practice is better than grinding bad. I, I think that's a great note, actually, Marco. Um, I think one of the things that's really important is it's not, you know, we've been talking here a lot about, oh, I, I love drawing, so therefore I keep drawing. And I think that keeps you in there and it does improve you. But uh, 
a faster way, a more efficient way, um, is knowing what the right practice is, right? Otherwise, like Marco said, you can just grind on bad practice and not really get anywhere. I see a lot of that too. I see a lot of people come to me with, oh, I've been out in the world on the internet and on YouTube learning from all these different videos. Um, but typically what happens is they're, they're going in the wrong order, right? So they grind on the wrong things. You know, they're trying to, let's say, draw anatomy before they know how to draw right it's like why are you focusing on anatomy you know first comes force right it's like first understand how things work and that evolves into things like you know anatomy so um all right let's yeah i love quotes and here's another one for for this topic as specific uh that is uh people say practice makes perfect right. and that's wrong right part practice does not make perfect mm -hmm. perfect practice makes perfect yeah yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because if right. you're practicing things that are wrong, then you're going to be perfectly wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's true. You'll be awesome at the wrongness. That's true. So we made a big jump here. We went from 18 to 26, right? So eight years. Yeah, indeed. I mean, in the meantime, um, the industrial design drawing courses lasted for like two years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I discovered there was uh, a game design and development um, education here uh, in the Netherlands. So I switched to uh, take that course. And uh, while doing that, I started to do a lot of self-study, you know, studying other famous instructors out there like uh, Andrew Loomis, Bridgman, and these guys. And, um, well, ironically, I also came across the first force drawing book during that time, during that journey, but um, I, I didn't totally grasp it, I, I think. I was able to, like, incorporate some some subjects, some aspects of it, but I, I didn't draw the, uh, totally grasp the idea during that time. I was more focused on form and, and structure and i think uh, coming from an industrial design background i think that was uh, natural that i focused on that you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. now you're a shape master great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah it took a while <laughs> yeah these are pretty good though right good drawings you could see that now you've learned mm -hmm. um form right form has changed mm -hmm. you have some force going on here Right? There's a little bit of stuff that's starting to happen here. A little piecemeal, mm. like it hasn't all tied together yet, but structure made a big change for you, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I was quite obsessed with form at that point. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. And it, you know, and it improved you dramatically. Yeah, yeah, it did for sure. I mean, form is important. It's just that it needs to follow function, you know? Right. It needs to be functional form. Yeah, that's that's what was missing here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you have tastes of it. There's little moments of it going on, but just not the full mm. clarity of it yet. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I I remember that at at a certain point, uh, like, I was like, I can see all this energy and life in the figure, but how the heck do I capture that on paper? You know. Right. That was kind of like my frustration. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and as you can see, it's uh, for me, it was always like uh, characters, characters, and more characters. You yeah, know? yeah. Study the human figure was just a means for me to improve my character designs. Yeah. Yeah, so these are recent, right? And I've been drawing dogs on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is pretty recent, you know, and... Well, I would, I must say, in, in st studying with you, you know, and being mentored by you, it, man, it made such a tremendous uh, difference in, in the rate at which uh, I was able to improve. I mean, I, I always knew that, like, that having a mentor was uh, important and helpful. But now that I've experienced it, I must say that I seriously, um, how do you say that? I underestimated mm -hmm. the value that a mentor could bring in uh, improving in, in whatever discipline that you're practicing. Yeah, just to be clear, uh, this is under our, our contract with Mike. <laughs> I know. I was, just, I was just <laughs> thinking that. I'm like, just as a caveat, this is not meant to be a big force ad. <laughs> <laughs> right or an ad about mike that's not the goal here I, I really i do really want to have a conversation around 
around like no no but it's 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 being mentored in general whatever you're practicing you know yes being having somewhere someone that uh has already walked the path you know yes yes yeah i can you know i i do a thing called force it i do this talk it's about two and a half hours long about my life that someday i'll i'll try to bore you guys with maybe on this on this channel and um i one of the things i talk about quite a bit is my mentors you know I, i wouldn't be here today without the people who taught me you know most yeah. definitely. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's look through the last couple of pieces here. We've got this one, right? So I know you've been pushing like exaggeration now, right? Yeah. Like Mitruni said, it's funny that I was so obsessed with force and now I'm more uh, inclined to draw with shapes. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that, uh, all that knowledge of form is what makes these shapes work, you know? It's a combination of force, form, and shape. And what we keep uh, telling students, they want to go to shape too early. Mm-hmm. You know, and I keep telling them the reason why these shapes work is because, first of all, they're based on force. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am aware of form when I draw them. You right. know, all, all, that, all those years of constructing uh, cubes and cylinders and, uh, you know, perspective grids, it's, it's still all in here, you know, it's still all in the lines. Yep. I'm just trying to answer a question here. There we go. Um, let's see. There's another one. It's an interesting one, of course, because it really shows shape relative to balance, right? And how this mm-hmm. all comes together. It's cool. And last but not least, you have a couple of character pieces. You've been talking about character, and you can see how far you've gotten in your career now, right? From your 18 year old drawings to this yeah this it's a tremendous uh, difference tremendous improvement yeah indeed yeah i'm very proud of all of you guys i mean look at that right it's really awesome oh cool <laughs> yeah, I, I think the most like uh, the biggest uh, learning moment for me was when i learned about uh, playing with shapes and proportions in character design it's mm-hmm. like that's kind of like I wouldn't say the essence, but uh, it really opens up uh, a whole lot of, of uh, possibilities and uh, creative ideas. You know, once yeah. you realize, say, hey, I don't have to like draw the average human all the time. Yeah. It's exactly the intention to play around with, uh, with shapes and proportions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I look at this, it's funny because when we put a figure drawing out with some few lines on it, I've heard comments like, oh, you must know force, right? Like they think it's, it's almost feels like a style thing. And I want people Mm -hmm. to be aware, like, look, this is actually a force drawing, right? And it's buried inside of everything that Swenley is doing here, right? But yet this whole figure holds together, you know, so it can be that uh, disguised, that deep, you know, within the work itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that le- that left eye is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the the lash on the left eye. Yeah. yeah. This is fun too. <clears throat> All right. Well, awesome, of course. Like I said, awesome job. I love, you know, where we've gotten to. And those of you that don't know Swenley's um professional work, you know, that's now what his one of the jobs that he does in the art world is character design, right? I know you've done some stuff, yeah. especially in games, I would say, more than anything. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, for me, it, it's always been uh, a drawing from life has always been like me the means to improve my character designs. You mm-hmm. know, that's why I draw so do so much gesture drawings is because at a certain point I was frustrated with not being able to pose my characters properly. You know, mm-hmm. and fortunately, force also helped me to understand how the body functions and being able to like predict how. Uh, would work, ah, so. yeah, that is big. What you just said there, mm. the idea—I forget. Oh, I, uh, and we'll get to this in a future video. But I've been listening to um, classes on physics, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things they said with physics, you know, what's amazing is it teaches you to be able to predict, right? Exactly. And man, that is yeah. so spot on to what we teach with force, right? It's if you understand force and gravity and mass and acceleration and you know and rhythm and balance, then it allows you to draw better from imagination because you can predict, right? You have some exactly. some sense of prediction. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. mentioning that. All right. Let's see. 
Let me share with you guys some of my work. Thank you, Swinley. Big box of surprises coming. Yeah, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> so here I am at eight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So similar to Swendley, I, I was very, um, I would say I was very imaginative. I was very caught up in television. You know, I grew up in the States and I think the way I filled my time was watching TV and playing video games. So this is 1978. It's like Star Wars had come out. You know, I like reading comic books. You can see I'm just basically ripping off Marvel over here. It's like Ghost Rider. This is a vampire, just general vampire. Ghost Rider, The Beast, Iron Man, right? And these are like my versions. I call this the team of ERs or ERs because it's like the Devler, the Chopper, the Stinger, the Killer, and then these guys, you know, Pirate and Torch, they're like on the side. And then we got Snake, of course, he's the coolest. And then I even went over here and I said, well, these are the strongest of them. So this is the whole team, but these guys are stronger and I started creating write-ups for them. I was like, here's what he does. Here's his powers, <laughs> right? I was very much into like thinking and the creativity behind it you know it's 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 like an intellectual property basically right here's my own like superhero team it's like my own avengers or something so i was very much doing a lot of this and a lot of my childhood was that and i was one drawing i don't have i remember i was probably about i was probably a little younger than six or seven years old i did was of a tri um, a triceratops that's when my second grade art teacher told my mom, like, you should watch your son. I think he has some talent, right? I think he has some ability around drawing. And it was Live, just, Mike? Yeah. You saw <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was out in, like, little tiger print loincloth, like, running around with, uh, yeah, with, with some dinosaurs and drew it, <laughs> drew it from life. Exactly. That's how far back I go, age-wise, right? So, anyway, this was my background, right? This is where I was at. You know, and I was watching, like I said, it was cartoons and comics. That, that, was, that was my upbringing, basically. So from there, I make a big jump, too. I don't have stuff. I wish I did, but I don't have much between this age of, let's say, 18, you know, 8 to, like, 16. So I put this up. This is a lot of the stuff I was doing at 15 or 16. Again, notice it's not reference. It was just me drawing out of my head. This was, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid. I was a total like fantasy geek. Um, I played probably between the ages of 11 and like 14 or so. This is a couple years after that. Um, but, you know, look at the flatness of the perspective relative to the guys. Like they're not in the space at all. But I was trying to figure it out, you know. And the characters are really stiff and flat. You know, I was trying to get detail. They're all wearing like chain mail and certain armor because I was a dork about knowing all that stuff. When I did see... And this is something I was um, aware of till, still to today. To Mertunje's point, I had a model speeder bike in my bedroom. Not a full-size one. <laughs> a small one. <laughs> um, and uh, I could see, though. right? You can see how accurate. I was very uptight about making sure here that every angle was correct in me copying uh, this model. right? I mean... Man, look at how, how maniacal I was about all these like tiny little details in the hand grips and you know the gun and all this stuff, right? So I was hyper hyper detailed, right? So I can do it, you know. And I remember freshman year, um, one of the assignments was to render um, eggs in like a piece of cloth, right? Because you were supposed to do a pencil rendering of that. I don't have that drawing. Um, but I remember it looking really photo real. So I knew I can, I can copy the heck out of anything. I, I could see very clearly. I, I think I kind of had that at an early age too, but I didn't like doing that. It kind of bored me. I wanted to really draw this stuff out of my head, right? So that's at 16. A lot of the stuff you're going to see now doesn't change very much here. This is 17. This is probably me. You can see this on notebook paper. This is what I would do in school instead of paying attention. All right, I would just keep like drawing comic book characters. I'm like, yeah, Wolverine. This I don't know what animal this is. It's supposed to be a Wolverine. I don't know what that is. A mixture of a cat and a bull, like or not a bull, a bear, a cat and a bear. You know, I'm coming up with my own costuming. Like, oh, Wildcat's not Wolverine. Wildcat, right? So that's why it looks like that. Uh, but you know, weird cost. I don't know what's going on here, right? But this is me in school, right? I think that's. Gonna leave, guys. Uh, see you uh, next Friday to everyone who's here. Uh, thank you, Mike, for sharing our drawings and see all the these other guys' drawings. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming, Diego. <laughs> From childhood. Yeah, exactly. See you next Friday, guys. We'll see you. Yeah, Diego. Yeah. So this, Bye -bye. Um, this is 
the reason I put these in here is this is 88. So this is me graduating from high school. Um, mm -hmm. This was a copy off of a guy in comics I really liked named Rick Leonardi and his Colossus from the X-Men. But um, you can see it's very scratchy, but I'm starting to like loosen up, right? I'm, I'm trying to like loosen up the line. This piece I put in here because this was in my portfolio to get into school, to get into school visual arts, into co uh, college basically. And I still am like, wow, okay, that's cool that they let me in, <laughs> right? Because I see the work today that I work on with students to get into art schools and it far exceeds like this piece here that I colored in marker. Uh, with these characters, right? And you can see I still have the fantasy go thing going on in the back of my head. It is, I think what's kind of cool about it is the creative piece of it. I have like this bad guy, almost looks like Skeletor or something, sitting in the background and guys coming out of the ground. There is, <laughs> right? I like that. It's cool that there's depth. You know, like there's a guy in the foreground, there's middle ground, there's background. I wasn't aware that there's levels of ground, but somehow I, I got this thing put together, you know? The yeah, Colossus one feels a bit the... more sculpted than the previous drawings, you know? Yeah, a little more form, a little more foreshortening, right? You can see, like, um, this is, you know, this is around the same time. I'm, I'm trying to bring all this stuff together, you know? Mm. So, and thank, yep. you know, to, it started working to some degree. So here I'm in school. This is, I'm probably around 20, and I'm learning how to draw the figure. You know, I had two um, prolific teachers for me. One was Jim McMullen. Um, who started teaching me that there is like some kind of rhythm in the body and respecting the body that way. And then I had another teacher named John Ruggieri who really taught me how to see like laser focus. Like, so he really leaned on controlling the hand and seeing. And Jim really helped me get a sense of, oh yeah, there is like aliveness in the body and seeing how that works. So here I am at yeah. 20. Oh, you know what? Let me see. I think there might be more in some of these. That one's just one. So you, here you are, Mitunje. Yeah, I mean, here I am, Rotunje at five, you know, yeah. and I'm at like twenty, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here I'm at twenty-two. Um, this is from the other class with John Ruggieri, and uh, oh, right jump. Yeah, so you can see my level of clarity in here, right? So this was from John. Uh, here, let me go full screen. And, you know, I'm learning line control, like I'm thinking about line weight and texture, the clothing relative to her face and getting structure. You can see the turning edge in her nose, right? The yeah. wrinkling in the shirt. Like, I like this hand a lot. I like the boniness of her hand, you know, the feel of her hair, like trying to make all these things very specific and clear headed. And yet on the other hand, I was also drawing like this, all right? So this is me at 22. And you can see the change in skill right like for me college really is what changed me the teachers i had in school really started to invent like who i am to this day uh, and seeing with that level of clarity and still trying to get movement and structure and perspective and form and again i was very lucky that i had um i had good teachers you know really really good teachers that helped me yeah looking at this one i i can I, see the influence of uh what's his name jim of jim yeah 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 it's also funny how our teachers influence us, you know. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Of course. There's, there should be a bit of uh, traces of your teacher in there. You know, yes. If you get a good job. Yeah, and still till today, both of those guys are in what I teach, along with my time at Disney, you know, and then my years of teaching and sort of systemizing the approach and making this all understanding is my way of saying, here's everything I've learned and how I've brought it to where it is, right? So last but not least, this is me at 24. I thought I would throw this in there because some of you may not know that I, I you know, my career out of school, um, I really went into working on uh, The Lion King at Disney. And uh, this is an actual drawing that I did that's in the film of uh, Simba. Uh, so all of that drawing experience, my whole childhood had finally gotten me to really the beginnings of my art career. So my first step out really was, you know, getting into Disney feature that, that really rocket shipped my career till to that you know till today so all the stuff you've learned about force none of that would exist without you know the teachers i had the mentors i had the mentors i had at disney and then you know the years of me teaching to try to get to this place and you know and then obviously um i didn't put in a current because you guys always see this relatively current um image but you know i went from this to um to basically uh this right this is the drawing that you, all of you know for the um, the cover of the first book, 
Um, and this is, when I look at this, this to me is a culmination of all the people in my past and all of the hard work, of course, that it took to get here. I had one student I was mentoring who was getting a little frustrated with his progress. And, and I said, you know, let's, let's sit down for a moment and let's, let's do some fast math on trying to figure out how many drawings it took me to get to show you, you know, let's say me doing a, a drawing in his mentorship class. And I very loosely estimated that it was over 50,000 drawings, right? So, you know, keep that in mind, all of you that are thinking, oh, I'm so frustrated with like my, uh, my growth. It's, there's like thousands, there are, like um, Malcolm Gladwell said, there are thousands of drawings ahead of you to get to drawing well. And, you know, none of us magically got there, even Mutunje, right? <laughs> he had to keep drawing and drawing and drawing. And that, yes. and he, yeah, and he stayed, and you stayed on that, right? And that's what got you better and better. And similarly, you know, you had good instructors along the way that's led you to, you know, where you are now. You had like probably key moments in your life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think to try and close off today, um, you know, mm -hmm. the focus and the whole point to all of this was do we think there's, you know, is this talent or skill? I don't know. I don't even know if we have an answer or we've gotten to an answer, but. I think it's probably a mixture of both, right? It's probably a mixture yeah. of, I personally want to say, I think you're kind of born with something in your brain compared to your body that says, I can see, right? And I could see well, or you're just creative, like I was doing with trying to draw characters or Swenley was, where Mutunje was more focused on seeing the world around him. Um, and then, you're, you know, either your drive, your inspiration, your parents' love and admiration is all kinds of different reasons why we keep sticking on that path. But practice does work, right? That's obvious. The right kind of practice works, which Marco brought up earlier, right? You don't want to grind on bad practice, but good practice instead. Um, and that finally leads you to learning how to draw, right? That's how you, I think, in the end, get better. So... I don't think it's, it's definitely not purely talent. That is for, for sure. And I think all of us today sharing with all of you, our personal work from our childhoods, I think it's really proven. First of all, notice we all started at a very young age. Now that doesn't have to be the case, but in our case, all four of us started very young, right? So we've been drawing for an extremely long time um, to get to where we are, you know? So um, let's take a look at the... Uh, the chat before we close, see if there's any last questions. Um, and then, yeah, let's see. Carla, uh, let's see. Good for you guys want success like, many people want success like yesterday. Yeah, I would agree. Joshua, man, I want to go to college. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting challenge. College or not college nowadays is a big question because there's so much online. Uh, I have to say, I do think if you're the right kind of person, you can do without it. And if you're the right kind of person, you're going to really succeed, succeed with it. You know, it just depends on who you are. Uh, big Mike art. Yeah, I definitely struggle with this. I find myself getting frustrated with my growth. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, it, time and patience, right? And leads to perseverance, right? Like you have to persevere. You have to be, have tolerance to being okay with failing. I think that's a really important thing to think about in the path of skill is it's okay to keep failing. You want to fail. You know, you want to fail because you learn off the failures, right? If you keep failing, you're not learning off it. That's a totally different ballgame right? You don't want that. And that's sometimes where mentorship or having somebody who knows more than you do helps. If you don't have that, then it gets a little more challenging because you might not know what you're failing at. You might have to do more of the legwork yourself on figuring that out, right? Uh, do you guys ever take an old drawing from your past? No, I've never done that. That's a great idea. <laughs> take an old drawing and redraw it. Maybe we'll do that in a future meeting, right? Um, Okay, so thank you everyone for coming today. Um, in the future, you know, this is only our second Force Friday, of course, but uh, in the future, we'll probably, I'm thinking, I've been thinking about this, um, this Force Friday um, workshop with you guys, and I think in the future we'll have sessions where very clearly the whole hour, hour and a half will be focused towards, um, you know, critique, or it'll be towards just demo, like a full hour of just demoing. I think we'll have ones where all we do is just answer your questions, right, and draw to, um, to answer those questions. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up, you know. So um, please do um, 
subscribe and share uh, you know, the channel as much as possible. So we keep getting more artists in here and therefore I think more interesting conversation. Uh, and that's it. Everyone have a safe weekend, of course, with the whole virus thing going on right now. So stay safe, stay clean. Um, let's all take advantage of the time where we're in this sort of uh, lockdown scenario and draw, right? Drawing is a great outlet. You guys have the internet to do that, right? We're here to help you guys at drawingforce.com if you're interested in doing that. And uh, thank you, Swenly, Diego, and Mertunje, uh for revealing to us, you know, your your past, right? I know sometimes that yeah, could be yeah. a scary thing too. It's like, oh my God, they want to see <laughs> where this all started. <laughs> but I, I I hope that if one thing comes out of today, besides even the conversation of talent and skill, is that you're all aware we didn't magically were you know we weren't born into this world knowing how to draw the way we do today, right? There's there's a full path of our histories that got us to where we are. You know, we're no different than any of you guys. So keep working, keep drawing, and uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. Take care and thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Yes, bye guys. See you guys. Bye guys.